I guess boss run here. And today let's talk about my third update to my Scourge Arrow or Caustic Arrow, Poison Ballista Pathfinder. Now, after we killed Feared on day three, basically just went out and started farming because I need a currency, not just to upgrade my character, but obviously to farm currency for the new character and everything I want to do after that. Usually when it comes to leak starters, I push it to a certain point and not really further because at some point I want to reroll. I'm uh, somebody who just wants to make a lot of different builds, make some test some cool interactions, especially with a leak that has so many new skill gems. But in this video, I'll basically show you everything I upgraded since the last update and in general, where you could take the build if you want to go further. Now, first thing a lot of people ask me, what have I been farming? I've been farming Legion Expedition. I will make a full video on this. It's probably going to come out uh, either tomorrow or day after. And I basically want to use Scourge Arrow's crazy clear speed. Well, not actually clear speed, but coverage. It just has so much coverage. Obviously, you're still a Ballista build at the end of the day, which you could obviously respec at some point into self-cast if you wanted to, if you choose to do that. But in general, Legions have been great. They're a lot of money. Fully fledged video on that coming out soon. In terms of what I changed for the build, I'll go over each slot and basically talk about it. So the first one is the bow. First, on your really good bow, you actually want an enchant. So that turns your quality, which is 20% increased physical damage into attack speed in this case, which is very strong. It costs you like 100 chaos in harvest juice or something to do this. So only do it on a bow that is actually worth it. In this case, this is the last bow I'm going to get. This has 1,425 DPS with an attack speed roll. The chance to cost bleeding is pretty much useless. Just a little bit by the by. You could go for the mastery right here that gives you 12% dot multi against bleeding enemies, but I didn't want to put in because people would be confused. And then either end it with chaos dot multi or if you have chance to poison or whatnot. Now, this bow doesn't have chance to poison anymore, so I had to redo this whole spiel right here. It is what it is. Now I need to get the, the poison chance back. Now, in terms of people have been asking GG bow, the GG bow would be triple tier one elemental. And the reason for elemental over chaos is. First up, the value is higher. And the second thing is the elemental damage that then gets converted to poison, basically, gets affected by elemental damage with attacks. For example, from primeval force right here, but also from stuff like your belt. So technically, elemental damage is slightly better in that regard. Now, when it comes to my helmet, a lot of people have been buying Corrupted Wilmas. That's all fine and good. I didn't really need it. Otherwise, just look for a high accuracy rating right here. As for... Amulets, I already talked about it in the latest video. I wouldn't craft these ever. On the bow, I guess, if you want to craft this one, I would definitely start with a tier 1 fracture, either fire, cold, or lightning damage. And then you will have to spam deafening essences until you hit another tier 1 flat, which is going to take quite a bit. So just be aware of that. When it comes to amulet, like I said, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can also go all's amulet and fit another haste in. And you can also go for a simplex amulet. Now, simplex amulet, if you're looking for the GG, that would probably be dot multi, chaos dot multi, and crafted max life. Or something like dot multi plus another stat that you really need, like chaos res. But that would be kind of wasted. You would definitely look for the double dot multi. That would be the absolute dream and probably the highest DPS amulet. Another nice one would be Ulnatol's Vow which will basically give you a seven link, be crazy strong. But other than that, yeah, your, your options are limited. I bought this one for two divines. There's way better ones out there. But in terms of rares, this is about as good as it gets. When it comes to the quiver, this is definitely something I could have upgraded at the end. The best implicit would probably be projectile speed because it makes your clear even better. And even against single target, it makes it so more of your pods are going to overlap. And on your perfect quiver, you would also definitely want plus one additional arrow, but you always want to keep the dot multi and the projectile speed. You never want those suffixes to get removed. Obviously, damage with bows would be great, but it is what it is. Then when it comes to jewelry, I upgraded this ring right here to get even more strengthened in. If you are strengthened in starved, like everybody on this build, there's a few ways you can go about it. You can take these nodes, but it's kind of inefficient. You can take the... Primal Spirit right here. Also kind of inefficient. You really want to get it on rings. Crafted Life, not optimal. No LE damage with attacks, not optimal, but it is what it is. This ring right here I already had last time. I actually need to catalyze this one for Riz. But yeah, cast speed, very strong because it gets converted. Flat damage, LE damage with attacks, and all the res you need. As for Azanov, the only thing I changed here is I bought different Azanovs because this has 26 int, mine had 22, and I needed exactly 3 to 4 int to fix my build. 
Other than that, everything stayed the same. As for belt, the GG would be a micro distillery belt. The way you would do it is you would basically craft this for flask mods. So for example, in increased flask charges gained and then other good mods that you need like life. You want to have a prefix open so you can craft LE damage with attacks, resistances, whatever. And if you get a micro distillery flask, it basically means you cannot use your fifth flask slot for flasks, but you can still use them for your tincture. So you're going to put your tincture in the fifth slot and you basically have no downside. What you get, however, is the 30% increased effect of flasks. And at that point, if you have a micro distillery flask, you really want to look into getting progenesis and taste of hate. And this is what we're going to look at in terms of flasks and endgame. Most likely, you want to fix your resistances without this flask right here. And you most likely will drop the jade flask and you will go for progenesis and taste of hate. It, there's a good chance that you would just go progenesis and actually keep the jade flask and not even go for taste of hate but that is up to you without taste of hate fixing your resistances might be pretty rough make sure that you have your poison berry tincture next to progenesis or your strongest flask at the time because don't forget that we have nature's concoction and adjacent flasks will get increased effect i also upgraded my boots i now got action speed right here nothing crazy only the four percent base it has a little bit more res so we're now actually chaos res capped and still same amount of spell suppression. If you're wondering, I know this tree looks kind of cooked because I have the Thread of Hope, so I don't need these small nodes right here, but without them, I don't have 100% spell suppression. And even if I got this from 12 to 14, it still wouldn't change a thing. So that's kind of annoying, uh, but it is what it is. On Tincture, nothing really changed. Just to point this out, people have kind of been apparently saying that phasing still doesn't work. So just so you know, the phasing on kill actually doesn't work. It's probably on killing blow. It's just mistakenly stated like that. Now, let's talk about Covenant here for a second, because I haven't been running this one at all so far. Just so you know, the Aura Gems or Plus 2 Gems is basically worthless. If you have Plus 1 to Gem, that's pretty okay, right? Like, you get like an extra 4% more damage. The absolute GG on your chest would be an increased damage corruption. However, I just want to warn you, with Covenant, you're going to get squishier. You probably want a Lightning Coil against Fizz Hits, it's going to be a lot better. However, Covenant, depending on how good your bow is, will give you between 40 and 50% more damage. And the way this league has been working out for me personally is I didn't feel like I needed more defense. I felt like I needed more damage because the league mechanic mobs that get affected by this dust are just so tanky. It is crazy. So I just felt like I want any damage I can. Now, you can also go Harry's Ire, Harry's Iris somewhere in the middle. The problem with Harry's is it's not like you can really cut you get 30 spell suppression, so you're overcapped, right? But it's not like you're going to cut and trench because these notes are crazy, right? They give you flask life recovery, right? You want them anyway. So cutting this is out of the question. I guess you could cut these two points, but you don't really get much value. And it's a lot less damage than a covenant would be. It does have better evasion, so it's somewhere in the middle of the pack of like defensiveness, offensiveness. So you definitely can go for it. Personally, Covenant right now is just cheaper, but you can kind of find it out yourself. Now, the number one question I've gotten is how how did you color your Covenant? People have been using, somebody told me 5,000 chromes or whatever. Don't do that. There is something in the game called Tainted Chromatic Orbs. So before we even talk about that, I have to talk about the Vrichi Chrome Calculator. I'll link this down in the description if you don't know about this one. But you can basically put in your sockets, six. You can say, this needs 134 int, right? That's what the body armor itself needs and then desired colors you want two red three green and one blue that is five off colors so let's see if you're doing that with normal chromes how much that is that's 2.9k with a lot of standard deviation or you could also go for this one down here with 3.2 that is a lot what you want instead is a corrupted covenant now if the implicit suck that's still fine it doesn't matter it's still easier to color and link than something like a uncorrupted one simply because these tainted currencies exist now tainted over fusings i already put a video down in the description about how you can use these but it's a lot easier to six link them with fusings at least right now the prices might go up or whatever but tainted chromatic absorb the way they work is they don't care about your calculations right here so the way it works is usually 134 int means that it skews towards blue sockets. However, when you use tainted chromatics, this is how the game skews your results. It's like it has no requirements or like one. You can put one in here. And then you put in your desired colors. 
three green, two red, one blue, and you realize it's a one in 12. So instead of having to use like 3000 chromes, you will have to use 12 tainted chromes. Can you get unlucky? Of course you can, but that's true for everything. So in general, use those, get yourself a Corrupted Covenant if you want to use Covenant. Like I said, Lightning Coil, more defensive option, High Reese somewhere in the middle. But what else did I change? In terms of sockets, I still basically have the same. People have been asking me why I'm not using Mana Forge on Frenzy. That's simply because I have Life Tap support, so I'm not actually spending any mana, just FYI. Calling Strike here, just against bosses, kind of nice. I have Grace, Vile Grace is not really necessary. I don't really use it all that much, but it is there, so why not? Haste, I'm only using Val Haste, so I'm not reserving that. And then also the Spare Self-Cast. A lot of people have been asking about Azanovs with the Spare Corruption, which is around about 7, 8 Divines right now. I would say in general, against bosses, it's worse, but I think it's worth for clear. So you're not going to press the Spare on every enemy, only on the harder enemies. And it can still be really nice. So difference here is a the Spare Implicit only applies a level 1 despair which is minus 15 res whereas the despair here is minus 30 res so you will do around about 20 ish percent more damage if you cast it yourself but it can be annoying the reason i do it is because i already have nothing to press i already automated basically everything so i might as well press something but if you want to completely make it no buttons then you can do that as well also a question has been the thing right here this node, does this get activated by your totems? No, it does not. That is why I'm casting Frenzy right here. That is literally it. You do it every four seconds and you're going to have your buff up. You don't need to do it, but it is nice to have. Other than that, what I did do is put my Flame Dash and my Steel Skin on Life Tap support. I had to drop the increased duration for the Steel Skin, but overall, I didn't really feel a difference. But the Life Tap makes it easier, especially in maps where there is no region, which I don't want to reroll because it's kind of free already. So I just put life up here. And I also upgraded my gems. For people who are asking about returning projectiles, for me, it feels way better with deadly ailments. Doesn't matter if it's deadly ailments, awaken deadly ailments, it feels way better in terms of damage. If you feel like it gives you clear or anything, that's fine. Even without the lag, I would take deadly ailments right now. So awaken deadly ailments, extremely strong. Your first awakened upgrade though should be unbound ailments, just because this one is, in terms of how much upgrade you get for your buck, the best and then level it up as soon as possible. It's also a reason why you want to buy them pretty early. Even though they don't give you that much, the earlier you buy them, the earlier you can work on the XP to get them to max level. But yeah, that's about it for me for the build. I hope you guys had a great leak start, or if you're uh, starting on console right now, you're going to have a great leak start. If you want to push this build even further, I would definitely go to PoE Ninja and see what other people are doing, and definitely take some of the things to heart that I said in this video. But in general, I will be soon moving on to the next strat. However, I will post a currency video, how I made currency with this build in the next few days. So definitely look out for that. But with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.